Ladies and gentlemen, this week on the Real Wrestling Podcast, we're going to introduce a whole new game. It's the word of the week where Joel will drop a word during the news report and see if Nathan can figure out what exactly that word is. The winner receives a point for that week's episode. Joel, do you have anything to say? And are you ready to drive Nathan crazy and out of his mind with this contest? All I have to say is that it's going to be difficult to beat me because I'm going to slip the words in when you least expect it. And you are quite a wordsmith. And you do know a lot about slipping things in. So (laughs) there you go. There's the contest. Word of the week, the Real Wrestling Podcast. Let's drive Nathan crazy. And hey, for you folks listening, if you have any suggestions for Word of the Week, be sure to send it to us. Thanks. I'm a wordsmith. Nathan's not. Hey, Ryan, I know we started up this new segment we got going on here on the show. The Word of the Week. You got one for me? Yes, Joel, I do. This week's Word of the Week is painstakingly. Painstakingly. As in me trying to figure Nathan's wording out. It's time for the Real Wrestling Podcast with all the news and views from this week's World of professional wrestling. Now it's time to keep it real with Nathan and Joel. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, good Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And no one likes Sundays because I'm back to work this week. Doesn't like Sundays anymore, I don't like Sundays anymore. I'm back to work. I'm back to work. How are we both doing, gentlemen? Exhausted. 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 Okay. Did you not have your coffee this morning, Ryan? I don't drink coffee anymore. I gave it up not too long ago. I am a soda person, though, in the mornings. But I no, I'm just um, I've been the the week in wrestling and between the Super Bowl and wrestling and everything else in the last couple of weeks, it's just been sort of like, yeah, I'm kind of uh, tapped out now. I'm ready for a break. But unfortunately, <laughs> that we, we there is no rest for the wicked because the pro wrestling world rolls on 24 seven, three, six, five. Literally yes. twenty, literally yes. twenty four seven as well. Uh, what was it? This it was, I think it was six a.m. this morning that the New Japan thing finished in my time. So it's just that's wild. mental. Absolutely. And, and you stayed up for the whole thing, I assume, right? You were there no. you every second. No, Nathan actually was there. He just flew back. Yeah, oh, really? Yeah, yeah that's, that's why, dedication. I mean, that's, that's why I was on time today, Ryan. <laughs> I guess I'm going to be the one that's late all the time now for the recording. But, oh, well, I mean, you know, hey, gives you guys time to loosen up a little bit and relax. See, I don't have to worry about it. I can go right into character right away. You know, oh, just okay. improv, just like that. Man. <laughs> well, shall we address the elephants in the room? Me and you have both had haircuts. Joel, yes, is still, yes. Joel is still ugly. You'll never know if I have a haircut or not because I always wear a hat. I don't know. Maybe you should cut your beard. Maybe. Well, Maybe. what do we... Okay, hold on. So... What do we need to do for you to cut your beard? How many how many likes on the YouTube page? I won't ever cut it fully off. I will trim it. Short. 100 likes on the YouTube page. Yep, cool. That's wait, agreed. Wait, wait, Hold wait, on. wait. All wait. in favor say aye. Wait. Aye. 100 subscribers? That's, that's, no, not 100 subscribers. Just 100, 100 likes, likes on any given... Yeah, on this video. Okay. A hundred likes on this video, and you will go bold. <laughs> We're adding things up now. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Joel will shave for a hundred likes. So if you right. never know what you might find in there too, Joel. You might have like five bucks or something yeah, lost, or like yeah. a set of car keys that's in the there's beard. You, yeah, some, lob- I mean, some lobster, some you know, right. brisket. Oh, no, there's definitely food. food in there. You know, there's a hundred percent. There's food in there. There's a hundred percent. Anyway, we've not got, uh, these people, lovely, lovely people, haven't really come to listen to us talk about what's in Joel's beard. However, would be probably a whole different podcast. Yeah. So the Joel's beard podcast. Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. So, as usual, Joel, take us away with the news. Okay. Um, I hate to do it, but I'm going to start us off on a somber note. Um, we lost somebody in the wrestling world. Uh, this week, uh, Jerry Jarrett, um, 
father of Jeff Jarrett. Uh, a lot of people knew him, loved him. He did a lot of good things for the business. And uh, behalf of myself, and I know you guys, we'd just like to extend our condolences to his family, Jeff, and everybody that knew him and everybody that's affected by his loss at this time. Yeah, 100%. Um, absolute visionary of a man. Um, knew what was coming in the business before I think anyone else really knew. Would you agree on that one, Ryan? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, kind of I, prophetic. I, I think that uh, what they were able to do in Memphis without really br branching much further from Tennessee, Kentucky, parts of Indiana, Illinois, you know, but mostly that Memphis, Nashville, you know, uh, Chattanooga at times, you know, area from that area, you know, they talked forever about how Jerry Lawler became such a big star and he never had to leave Memphis because Jerry yeah. Jarrett had built such an empire. Their Saturday shows on WMC in Memphis were so highly rated that it was, it's, I mean, a lot of people can't quantify today how much local pro wrestling meant to that community. And in Memphis, it was because of Jerry Jarrett. I had great fortune of meeting Mr. Jarrett on a couple of occasions, very polite Southern gentleman, of course, you know, um, and just uh, it, his family, his legacy, um, going back to his mother, going now to oh, his son, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, uh, Mrs. Yeah. Jarrett, Christine Jarrett, um, you know, the, their entire legacy, they, they embody everything that is Memphis and Nashville, Tennessee, um, and, and that whole era in wrestling, you know, uh, you just yeah. can't, I don't think when somebody like Jerry Jarrett passes and I'm stumbling to really put it all into words, cause it's kind of hard to, when someone's touched so many different people's lives and so many careers mm -hmm. and been a part of so oh. many big moments, it's almost impossible to put it into words. Really? hundred percent. We could have many podcasts on Jerry's just, just, the, his, just the history, yeah. the history yeah. and what he created. And, and as Ryan said, Jerry Laura never had to leave Memphis, really, because Memphis was Jerry Laura. And do you know what I mean? It, it, because of the way in which he, he worked, you know, the, it, incredible, definitely a visionary, saw what was coming before it was coming with Vince um, and put up a damn good fight as well. It yeah. was one of the very last territories to kind of go under the banner in a way um and yeah um our condolences go to to the entire family and, and friends that, that knew him yeah. and one of the great stories of that is that he and jeff didn't talk for over a decade i believe over some business dealings with with tna and and some things that uh, allegedly vince russo was involved in i, I don't mm -hmm. know the whole story on it um but you know, the good thing is they reconciled and they've been able yeah. to have a great life together, you know, as, as father and son again, the last few years. Um, again, I great respect for Jeff. Uh, um, I know that he had his struggles just a few years ago. And I think part of him getting better um, from his addictions and his personal demons that he had to battle was reconnecting with his dad. So, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, it's just, it's more of an examined life than a loss. You know, it's right. really yeah. someone that you, you look more at their legacy than you do at the loss. Right. And his legacy exactly. is so great. 100%. Okay. So what else, Joel, on the, the less upsetting news? All right. Uh, breaking kayfabe. It's Sunday. This is the usual day that we record this first half of our show. Um, we you know, had... don't even care at this point. They're like, wait, just tell us what's going on. <laughs> what, what do yeah. you guys think? Yeah. We had a, we had a pay-per-view last night. Uh, yeah. New Japan. <laughs> we, that, we had that one, too. <laughs> um, Curveball. Um, elimination chamber, though, is what I was referring to. Firstly, well, yes, uh, I guess I guess that, but you know, Nathan uh, didn't watch a single minute because he was actually in Japan. Hey, no, 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 I was in the elimination. I was the chamber. <laughs> he was the chamber. <laughs> I was the chamber. <laughs> um. Uh. The yeah. show actually opened up with the women's elimination chamber match. Uh, Did it? Yeah. Okay. okay. Opened up hot, and they they do say that if you don't go on last, you want to go on first, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I think they did a great job opening the show with that match, and I think the ladies put on a great performance. I think I thought it was a a, a really good match. So 
if my understanding is correct, because I've seen results, I've obviously seen results. I can't like, I'll be honest with with everyone that's listening. I cannot give in depth analysis like I normally would. Okay, I mean it was late last night and. I had decorating to do today and I had to be up at the crack of dawn. And I was, you know, it, it it's not always possible to watch everything. Right. But Asuka won the match. Yes. She wait did. a minute. Wait. So you didn't get to see any of it, Nate? Well, then you're fired. I, I, as, the, as the editor of Real Wrestling, I want to let you be your walking <laughs> papers right now. Joel, you and I will finish the show. Nathan, we wish you best of luck, of course, in your future endeavors. I love how your future endeavoring your boss. Uh, <laughs> As the director of media operations, sit slightly higher. Anyway, <laughs> no one tell my boss. Then no we'll one take tell a vote. my boss. Then no. we'll take a vote. You're voted out. I vote for... Oh, wait. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, carry on. Go on. So, yeah, uh, I, I believe Asuka won. She did. Okay. She did. okay. Um, I, I like that. Um, honestly, I think it, it's her time again. Uh we did talk about how Vince kind of uh, makes Japanese uh, wrestlers look like cartoon characters, but he's not there right now. So it would be really interesting to see how Triple H runs this and well, see what they can do with her at WrestleMania. Well, Triple H has always had a, a good, if you just if you look at NXT as well, etc. Um, always with that talent has always made them appear strong and mm-hmm. Asuka has started to appear strong once again and yes. step away from that cartoonish way I would say um, so is it going to now be Asuka Belair is that is that the way it's now yes. lined up to be mm-hmm. that actually could be a really good match I think so that's I mean, that, that's go ahead Oh, I say I think I don't think it'll be a great match. I think that's what they're going for. They're going for a blow away athletic showdown. I, yeah, I don't 100%. know if Oscar wins the match, but I, I know that it's going to be a hell of a shootout between those two because you've got two of the greatest athletes, female athletes we've ever seen in WWE. I, I, I agree with you on that. I don't think Oscar will win it, and I think the reason being is, <clears throat> if I understand correctly, her contract is coming up soon, mm-hmm. um, and kind of understandable they don't put the belt on her but i don't think she'll resign i think she's more starting to wants to kind of settle down but hey i would love to be wrong because she she is such a great athlete right who knows they could put it on her and she could resign she could know. she could she could okay and that's one of those type of matches that you could say it might not be match of the year but it might be match of the night, you know, because there's going to be could. two nights of WrestleMania. That could, it could, it it could, could steal it that could. show. It depends on where it sits. It could. It could. Yeah. Well, and then also considering her other skills, her talents, uh, you know, outside of the ring, there's a chance that maybe she would go to being a part-time person in the ring and do some stuff behind the scenes, like mm-hmm. an, maybe an agent or, you know, I know she's done, I believe, graphics for video games and things like mm-hmm. that before. So she's, never know. I mean, a, she's a produced a couple of the women's matches too from, from yeah. inside yeah, so, I mean, she's got a, understanding. She, I think what they'll do is give her a nice big run here at the end, maybe another mm-hmm. title run, and then maybe she rides off in the sunset and does some other things for them, or maybe she goes – back home and goes back to, you know, regular life. Who knows? You know, yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I, I sense that she's somebody that has a really good idea, a good grasp of who she is and what she wants mm-hmm. her legacy to be when it's all over. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Okay. What's next? We had the second match was Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley. I actually I, thought that I, was a pretty I, good I match. Heard this is a, this was a bell to bell, absolute stunner. Yeah, it was. And did it um, a DQ, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, yes. Brock Lesnar, uh, Lashley had him in, in his submission, and Brock Lesnar low blowed him by kicking backwards, kicking it, kicking him right in the family jewels, and the referee the old saw man it. Bag. Yeah, <laughs> and referee saw it and uh, rang the bell. And Bobby Lashley won by disqualification. I'm qu- I'm quite glad they did it like that. A, a blowout match at Mania. A blowout right. match at Mania, yeah. I think, is is needed for something like that. Mm. And I think 
Lashley going over Brock as a handoff in a way because I think Lashley could keep going. I don't think Brock. I think Brock's more and more becoming a part timer more mm-hmm. than he was. I think that would be a good way of doing it. Well, I will say this. I enjoyed this match for two reasons. Number one, I, di- I bet on it. I didn't bet on who would win. I bet on <laughs> how much sweat would come out of Bobby Lashley during this match. <laughs> Vegas had the over under at a gallon and I took the over and I won a hundred bucks. So that was a good, <clears throat> a good start to my night. But um, as far as this match goes, no, th- what I loved about it is I just got in writing a column last week about how Brock was all, you know, warm and fuzzy and telling jokes and everything. And then he went and mm-hmm. he went and brocked it up after this match. And he, he takes out Bobby with the low blow. Then he takes out Bobby with the F5 on the table. Then he takes out the referee. And, you know, <laughs> like they say, Brock going to Brock. And so, he, yeah, he showed his true colors at Elimination Chamber. But it was great. I mean, it was a great, like you said, it was a battle of bulls. I mean, they just basically yeah. just did the rock em sock em robot thing. They just crashed into each other for a while. And it was a fun match to watch. And and I do agree. I think it sets up a great, great, just clash of the Titans at Russell. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. He F5 the referee twice. Once in the ring and once out of the ring. Play. Hopefully play. the referee knew that was coming. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Rock's been known <laughs> to just sort of decide to do some things. Yeah, well, you know? Who was it? Yeah. It was one where, when he came, oh, when was it? I can't remember one of his returns. He came back and F5, the ref, and it turns out that the ref had absolutely no idea. And he got F5 like three times. And he was like, <laughs> what the hell? And he genuinely did get fined for it because they put uh, a referee, well, they put someone's life in danger because they right. weren't prepared for it, which is well, crazy. I mean, if- he does oh, the, moves, the incident hey. where he clubbed Randy Orton in the back of the head. I don't yes. remember what. And, until it was busted open and Jericho was legitimately pissed. Oh, he was. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then they cleaned it up saying, oh, no, Randy. I, I watched that. So there's no way he knew that he was getting ready to take those shots in the back. Yeah. I don't know what happened there. Brock lost it or Randy did something he didn't like or, or what. But there's no way you can tell me that that was staged or that they yeah. he knew that was good. That he opened him up bad. Hey, did I hear you guys say you're looking for the best place to find pro wrestling action figures? Uh, we're, not, not. we're in the middle of an interview. I'm glad that you asked. Huh? Well, I can let you know right now that if you go to store.realwrestling.net, that's the place to find all the AEW, WWE action figures, and more. What do you guys think? Are you Ryan? That- that's, Ryan, that's okay? cool. I mean, you can add to your collection today. Just go to store.realwrestling.net to find everything that you're looking for. Ryan, Ryan, we're in we're the middle, in the of, middle an interview. of a show. This is important. Are you, uh, are guys, you, guys, you guys, guys, don't you want to expand your pro wrestling collection? I mean, yes. Uh, but, of course, but, always. Well, then head on over to store.realwrestling.net and fill up your basket with anything that you've been looking for. Everything from AJ Styles all the way to Zeus from A to Z. That's right. You can find it at store.realwrestling.net. Why don't you guys head on over there after you get done doing the show today? I think well, Ryan's broken. Well, but are you broke, bro, dude, dude. Uh, uh, okay. Did, I mean, I'm going to go. I, I mean, uh, I, he I'm, sold I'm, it. I'm he sold confused. it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. From the back I think I think the beatdown was due, but not the busting open and they just right. went with it and like you said jericho and jericho spoke about this many a times um was genuinely pissed um whereas everyone else was a bit like bro you shouldn't have done that jericho was in his face and i think vince had to pull them apart in the end mm. i think there so. was no i think I remember that hunter tried noble tried like they were all in the way and vince apparently just walked in the middle pushed the two of them aside told jericho to go one way told brock to go the other way and yeah. Um, anyway, sorry, we're divulging. Go on next. Yeah, and I just cut off Joel a second ago. I just, I just pictured the Randy Orton back of the head bleeding, like while he was just trying to pull that himself off the mat. Yeah. And I was like, that oh was yeah, there was sad. that time. There was that time Brock, you know, did something else he wasn't supposed to do. Probably. Oh, many a time. Several many times. A time. But he's okay. Brock Lesnar, and he does what he wants. Yeah, yes. pretty um, much. The next match was Edge and Beth Phoenix versus Rhea Ripley and Finn Balor. Okay, how did that go down? Because in my opinion, I, I don't know what happened with this one. So if, I, I don't know, go on. Um, well, Edge and Finn Balor, or 
Edge and Finn Balor. Um, Edge and Beth Phoenix won the match. Um, what actually, that do for Rhea? It doesn't help Rhea, but Rhea also didn't get pinned. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Beth Phoenix did her finishing move on Finn Balor, and then uh, Edge pinned uh, Finn Balor. So, oh. if anything... It kind of made Finn look bad. They did the tag team move, right? Wasn't it right. the old the 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 Edge and Christian tag team move, right? Right. She hit oh, her yeah. move, tagged him in. He came in, pinned. Him. And now I can't okay. remember what the name of that move is, but uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. The one that yeah, Edge yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, yeah. I don't, are they? I don't know. Is Judgment Day? Judgment Day could have been such a big thing, and. I feel like it's going the comedy route. I don't know. Uh, I yeah. love the I love the attire that they come out in. I love the stage setup when when they come out and the graphics and whatnot. But past that, it's yeah. really not doing it. Okay. For me. Okay. So. Next. Um, then we had the men's elimination chamber match for the United yeah. States Championship. Do you know, I never... Can I just say about this? I didn't like the the belt when they changed it over from mm-hmm. the old design. I really like the old design. And the new design is kind of now growing on me. Kind of like it. Yeah. Sorry. It's not a bad Little, looking belt. No, kind of a different... Sorry, that's just me. The Intercontinental I have a massive problem with. But anyway. Yeah. They they ruined that. So, way. go on. Um, Austin Theory retained his title in that match. Ooh. There were some heavy hits in that match as well. Yeah. I want to and bring up something real quick on that, too. Uh, Montez Ford, the injury. Has anybody been able to figure out, is that a, was that legit, or was that to help set up the spot there? Uh, did, again, did, I haven't Joel. seen anything. Yeah, it. it's Joel. Yeah, I didn't. I, but did you see the spot, Joel, where he got hurt, and they, they had to help him out of the ring? Did, is that the one where he fell from the cage? Yeah, the Street Profits wrestler, yeah. uh, Montez Ford. Yeah, and they, the refs all had to try. It, it, there was essentially a spot where everything stopped, and everybody's just kind of killing time like there's a legit right. injury in the ring. But at the same time, as they're opening the cage door to bring him out is at the same time where Logan Paul makes an appearance and pops up in the cage. So I didn't know yeah. if they staged that to have the cage door open for an extended amount of time for the spot or if he was legitimately hurt and it just happened to fall at the same time. You know, I, I don't know. I haven't had a chance to see any reports right. on it, but I do know that he, it looked like he took a pretty good spill, but then at the same time, it's pro wrestling. So you yeah, never know. Honestly, that, the fact that Logan Holy Hawkins, shit. Sorry, shit. Sorry, I've just seen it. Oh. The Nathan only thing that made me question it was Paul coming in at that time. Exactly. It wasn't, That's the, the, what bump, the, it the bump looked me. sick, but I was just like, but yeah, but the, the way that they were doing it and, and picking him up, they moved him. You know, I didn't think they would move him. I thought, well, if he's really hurt, they're going to put him on a board. Well, they had him up and walking out of the ring, and that's when Paul came in, and I thought, mm, maybe that's, yeah. you know, maybe that's the situation where they set that up for that spot. But, it, but he, he's okay. Put it this way. He, he's tweeted four hours ago, God is good. Right. So I, I well, think... Well, he, he tweets that every day, um, if you follow him. Uh the thing about me with WWE, where they make this kind of painstakingly obvious, they have Montez Ford fall. He looks like he's injured, but at the same exact moment, they're opening the cage to let him out. Logan Paul comes in. That, to me, right there, red flag. I think it's a fake injury. It's probably storyline. That right there, you know? Well, I mean, that opens. I mean, I can't, I'm not going to lie. It opens up now, Seth versus Logan, WrestleMania. Okay, fair. I didn't want that match. And I'm going to be a little bit controversial. I wanted I wanted Logan versus Cena. You wanted Logan versus Cena? I kind of wanted Logan versus Cena. Who knows? Um, I mean, Cena's done those type of matches where he's sitting in the audience and then he goes one-on-one with The Undertaker. Nah, because he's going to be against Seth now. They've built that, but... Anyway, sorry, I divulged a 
little bit. Yeah, further. but you got to admit those two athletes together in the ring, that's probably going to be a banger, those two guys. Because oh, Logan Paul has shown us what he can do. And we yes. know Seth is one of the best in the world. So and he's going to carry Logan. Uh, Logan's got the athletic ability. If he, if he follows Seth, which he will, you know, we're going to have a match I think we're all going to be talking about in the next. It's not going to be the best match at WrestleMania. But it's going to be one that we're all going. Oh wow! It Do you remember this yeah. spot? We'll remember that? You know, viral moments because that's what absolutely been, yeah. At the end of the day, I mean, look, I, I've listened. I listened to his, his his podcast, Impulsive. Mm -hmm. I've listened to the conversations between him and uh, Hunter, and when he was brought in, Hunter brought there. He was brought in for viral moments. Right. And think about every single match he's had. Think about the views. From the viral moments that have carried on Twitter and how quickly they've done, he is hitting every single spot that he needs to do. So, right. yeah, I think I think it's going to be good. So, okay, so Austin Theory survived. Interesting. Retained. Well, yeah, survived. Retained. It ended up being with him and Seth Rollins at the end, and he ended up being able to win. So. Oh, okay, 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 nice, okay. Uh, next. Uh, next and final match was Roman Reigns versus Sami Zayn. And Sami wins! No. Oh. Um, oh. Good match. I will say uh, one of the better matches of the night. Uh, best crowd moments of the night. Oh. The crowd was so fired up for Sami Zayn. It wasn't even funny. They were all for him. And there was some explicit chance towards Roman. Really? And English and French, I believe. Love I think so. the Canadians. I love them. Um, one thing that I noticed about this, and Joel, I, I guess we could walk through this bit by bit if you guys want, because I think this really, to be honest with you, watching this show, and, and I'm not saying it was a terrible pay-per-view, but the anticipation around the main event made everything else just seem like an appetizer. Oh, did it? I mean, it, it was just, it, it was almost like you were sitting through that, like, okay, good match, good match. But when do we get to the main event? You know, it was like, it was so, everybody was so excited for it, which was great. I mean, that's that's what we want in wrestling, you know. Um, but as, as it got closer and closer, I started feeling like the heartbeat race and a little bit thinking, this could be something really special. And I said this on Facebook, on social media. I'm almost 50. I've been watching wrestling since 1979. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, since I was a little kid, I, I've seen, I've gotten to the point where I feel like I've seen it all, you know, heard it all. It's all been a swerve. It's all been done, blah, 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 blah. But then there's certain moments that will just get you. And I think, and this will be something And Joel, I'll kick it back to you since you got to see this live too. What struck me is how live the crowd was for the first few minutes of the match. And the two guys didn't touch for probably five minutes while the crowd just lost their minds. They did not lock up. They right. did not touch for a sink. They were literally on opposite side, not even close to each other. Mm -hmm. And the crowd just did not let up. They just poured it on. And when they started doing the Ole 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 song, I told, uh, you know, I said to my wife, I said, they would have sang it all night long. If those guys were stood there, they would have stayed there all night and sang that song. That is power. That is emotion. That, is pro wrestling yep. right there. And the fans got everything that they wanted out of that match. So, so you really missed something good, Nathan. I you have, you have have to um, at least yeah, I, will, I will, the, this evening, I will you, sit you'll love it. Chance to sit and watch it. Yeah. So my question is this. So if Roman won, is it dead? Is the story now dead? No. No. There was a spot with Jey Uso where Roman pushed him twice in the face, okay. hand to the face, pushed him. Okay. Okay. Jay Uso, Uso uh, ha had the chair in his hand. Roman snatched it from him and then started beating Sammy with it. The ref wasn't there to call the match because he, he was out. Um, but I will say that spot right there keeps that storyline going because what is Jay Uso going to do now? Is he going to cost Roman the match at WrestleMania? Ooh. And then also, then Sammy accidentally speared Jay 
when yeah. Jay was, was there with Roman. Jay has done nothing. He hasn't been on any, he hasn't taken a side. He's just standing there kind of looking confused. Roman's in front of him. Sammy goes to spear Roman. Of course, Roman moves. It's the old spot. Bam, he hits Jay. So now the question will be, now maybe does that rub Jay the wrong way? And yeah. he goes back to the bloodline because, hey, Sammy spear. And then Kevin comes in, cleans house at the end. You know, I oh, mean, there's so, it it. yes. And then yeah. there's, so, and then they don't acknowledge each other. Really. They don't shake hands, hug anything. There's no reconciliation there. So you've got a lot of main event parts on the move right now that nobody knows who's aligned with who and who's really whose friend. Um, right. And I think that's where the storyline goes. It's not so much about the bloodline as much as what's going to splinter off from the bloodline now. And I, the bloodline will be the overarching part of it, yeah. but every great angle eventually has to have some moving pieces. And I think that's what we're seeing now, finally. And, and I mean, they've gotten two years out of this just focusing in on Roman. Now, now it's become an ensemble cast. Yeah. So I put out the other day, I think it was on Twitter or Facebook, I can't remember which one, and said night one becomes Sammy versus Roman. For the, uh, for the Universal Championship. Night two becomes Roman versus Cody for the WWE. Could it, maybe, maybe not, I'm not saying maybe Sammy, I'm saying maybe Jay, night one, now. Do you know what I mean? Because we right. need to split, we need to split the belt right. somehow. We need to split the belt somehow because you can't have, because it's going to end up being Cody Rhodes for the Universal WWE Championships ships multiple yeah we need to split them belts how yeah, i'm the opposite i'm i'm for that would be a way somebody. to split them right there yeah i i'm i'm the opposite i've never liked the idea of having two world champions in the same company i don't know why i think you have one top guy that's why roman has both belts now i think that you carry that over and you eventually just mold those into one title hey that, hey, hey look, that guy I, appears I, on most shows yeah I'm a, i agree Diego. with you but the the issue that we've got here is that they seem to be putting two belts on one person. So they're not, they could have easily just got rid of the other belt a long time ago, but they've got two years, 900 days with a dual champ. Yeah. Well, they not dual, not, not to pull 900 days. He no, got the, but, the WWE title yeah. from Lesnar last year, yeah. I believe. So, but, but, but I see your point. It's the same thing with the Uso situation. They've got yeah, both belts exactly. for so long now. You know, why not just put everything together, say the world tag team titles are one title, the world title is one title, exactly. and they wrestle on both shows. They're, they're, what they, is wrong with but that? They, but there's nothing wrong with that, but they've gone too far. Yeah. So do they need to split it to then stop it? That's right. my thought. Do they need to split, they the stop? split it and then they have a match, maybe to say combine it. SummerSlam or something like that? Well, they end up Survivor doing what they did with NXT and NXT UK. You've got those two belts. They did a unification match for it become NXT. Right. And that was the way in which it's going to have to happen. So you have to split them right. at this point to then unify them and make it happen that's my oh that's my thing now is right because they're not just going to unify it out of nowhere no and the only other thing is they throw it in the bin but how many times have we done seen that before now do you know what right. i mean and it becomes a little bit well what was the point of you defending two belts for the last you know year and a bit right it adds, I, will say, I will say this and i know we're running a little late so i guess i kind of put a bow on my thoughts on it but with everything that's going on, not just in storylines, but behind the scenes in WWE, I think from WrestleMania on, from a storyline perspective, it's going to be, we're going to see a huge shift in what goes on. It's going to, it's going to determine a lot of WWE's future for the next few years. I do yeah. believe that. Yeah. Oh, also, at the same agree. time, their business decisions are going to affect what we see over the next few years. Yes. We saw this a few years ago when they signed the Saudi deal, the SmackDown and the Raw deal all around the same time, how the programming changed we're about to go through another one of those transition yeah, stages yeah. again on screen and off. And, and I, I think that that's the biggest thing we're going to say at the end of 2023, man, how many changes we've seen in this year. Oh, hundred percent. And it's going to start in the ring and it's going to carry over outside of it. Yep. In my mind. Yep. I agree. I agree. Okay. We're, All we're right. Going. So Next. moving on here. Um, we had another pay-per-view that Nathan we mentioned did. And it's because amazing. Nathan was there. He can tell you, that Mercedes I, Monet no, 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 is the new 
I was going to run through it. Wow. I actually know about this pay-per-view. I was going to run through it. Yeah. But you I'm were sitting in front row. It. But, uh, hey, I was the ring. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Joel, you want to watch mm. me break Ryan? <laughs> can you do it again? I go on. Okay, okay, okay. Ready, ready, ready. I don't think you can. Hey, Ryan. You heard yeah, what's going on? Store.realwrestling.net? What, what, what did you say? Have you heard of store.realwrestling.net? I think it's Have I thing. heard of it? It's my whole life. It's, it's the only nice. place to go to find the very best in action figures and more from WWE, AEW, and all over the world. Come on, guys. Who hasn't heard of store.realwrestling.net? He's I mean, doing it again. He's doing it again. This is brilliant. Here we go. We broke him. Come on. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I've not heard of them, Ryan. Well, Please. whether it's something for yourself or a gift for a loved one, you can find it at store.realwrestling.net. It's the only place to go for real wrestling fans. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. One more time? It's store.realwrestling.net, Joel. I'm surprised that you're not over there right now. Uh, what, what do they sell? From A to what? From AJ Styles to Zeus, from A to Z, everything and every letter in the alphabet, from AEW to WWE, that's store.realwrestling.net. All right, I think we should give him a break. Yeah, I think we broke him. I think we've 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 rather truly broke him. This is brilliant. I love it. (laughs) Well, I'm telling you guys right now, if you're looking for everything for your collection in pro wrestling, you should go to store.realwrestling.net. Very good. <laughs> I will run through this quickly. Give me an instant thought. This is going to be problems, though, because I can't pronounce people's names because I can't even say Mr. 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 Anyway, Alex Coughlin defeated J.R. Kratos. Okay. Does I've said it correct? Yep. Two great yep. guys. Two great, great guys. 10 mm. minutes and 7 seconds long, so it was actually quite a good old chunky match. David Finley, this is the interesting one for me here, because I didn't think this would happen, but David Finley defeated Bobby Fish. Mm. I didn't think that was going to happen, because Bobby Fish kind of come in a bit, and yeah, yeah, yeah. What? A, anyway. Right. Uh, an eight-man mm. tag. Now, this was a good match. Um, just a shame, just a big old shame that a guy I really like lost. But Kushida, Voldo Jr., Kevin Knight, and the DKC defeated Mascarina Dorida. I think I've said that correct. Sorry if I haven't. Josh Alexander, Adrian Quest, and Rocky Romero. That's an interesting one, the way in which they've done that. Quite a... Uh, Quite, quite a good little bit of splits of the yeah. way they're going to do that. So I'm quite looking forward to that. Kenta defeated Fred Rossi, Rossio, Rosso, Rosso, for the Strong Openweight Championship. So we I have a title names change. Butcher names. Shut up. Leave me alone. I struggle with speaking. <laughs> the next one, the Motor City Machine Guns. This was also good for the Strong Openweight Tag Team Championships. The Motor City Machine Guns defeated the West Coast Wrecking Crew for the championships. So that that's good. Again, new champions. Uh, sorry, not new champions. They were champions. So it carries it on, which is good. Mm-hmm. This one. This one has put a couple of shockwaves in here. Um, and I'm intrigued. I mean, Ryan, I don't know if you know the outcome. Do you know the outcome of this pay per view? No, I actually did not. I knew okay. I knew about the Mercedes Monet thing just because I saw yeah. it. So this was the loser leaves New Japan Pro Wrestling oh, yeah. match. Had uh, basically Eddie Kingston loses. He would need Jay White's permission to continue to compete in New Japan Pro Wrestling if. Eddie Kingston wins. Jay White, I believe, instantly. Doesn't even get permission, just instantly leaves. And Jay White lost. Jay White lost. He's going to WWE. He's not going to WWE. He's I'm not. Money on I'm it. telling you now, he is not going to WWE. Going to WWE. 
He's not. Okay. AEW Next. at minimum. That's where he is going to go. It's, it's That's where he is going to end up. Um, this one is a filthy rules fight. Very good match. Uh, Tom Lawler defeated Homicide by uh, submission as well. Mm. Yeah, interesting. Now for the New Japan Pro Wrestling World Television Championship. Zack Sabre, Sabre Jr., fellow Brick, defeated Clark Connors by submission. Mm. Very, submission. very good. Very, very good. The next one, IWGP Women's Championships. Yes, we have said about it. Kyrie versus Mercedes Monet. Longest match of the night, which really shows to me now that they are putting some heavy light on a women's division in New Japan, which is really good, in my opinion. Uh, Mercedes Monet is the new champion. Thoughts, gentlemen? Is the whole thing like isn't finished yet, but thoughts on that match? Well, when you say it was the longest match of the night, was it long as in there was a lot of action, or did they waltz around for a long... I mean, because no, Sasha's no, no, no. not really in a position where she has to do a lot right now. She's yeah. living on star power, so... I haven't seen the match, but my guess is she did a lot of uh, selling and and a lot of um, it was a, lot a of very, very yeah. strong match. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. yeah, very strong match overall. It's got some real good reviews as well. So if you if you get the chance, go and watch it. And, and I'm not saying I, I like Sasha. I mean, I like Mercedes, whatever her, yeah. her name is now. I like her, and I and I think she's a great athlete. But I didn't know how much now she's more of a commodity and a kind of a no, um, have a it, special attraction as opposed to really having to do a lot in the ring. So I would definitely, be definitely the special attraction, definitely the special attraction on there, but also has really come about where it was a good, good match. Nothing, mm -hmm. nothing to complain over. Uh, finally, um, that wasn't the last match, which I didn't expect it to be um, because. They are gonna. It's the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. Yeah. By the way, my absolute favorite looking championship. That is out of everybody's. I absolutely mm. love the look of that championship. Beautiful title. Yeah. The new one? No, the old one. No, oh, the old you don't have the Okada belt. Yeah, the the oh, old. Yes. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. That is a beautiful. The new one, not so much. The old one, oh, beautiful. Okay. Yes. So this was Okada, the champion, versus Tanahashi. See, Tanahashi. I can't say some names. And Okada I'm say Hiroshi. Hiroshi. <laughs> Hiroshi. Tanahashi. Tanahashi. Uh, absolute strong hitting match. Um, <laughs> Okada won, which doesn't surprise me. No. Um, won by pinfall. Very good match. Very good pay-per-view. Honestly, folks. Go and watch it. Um, New Japan are putting on some heavy stuff at this moment in time. And it, it's also including quite a nice little storyline for a lot of the stuff. And it was also a mixture with AEW in there. Impact mm -hmm. was in there. Uh, what's the... Hold on a second. The what Impact is, World Champion was in there. In that um, and CMML. CMLL was also there. Don't ask me to say what it is because I cannot pronounce it. I don't speak Mexican and uh, I don't speak, I don't speak any, I barely speak Spanish. English. I barely speak English. So yes, it was Spanish. An English man that struggles with English. Exactly. He, he's such a big AEW fan. Nathan, do me a favor. Will you say Rampage for me? Rampage! Oh, he didn't pronounce it Rampage like he normally does. <laughs> Shut up! You and Simon, and you know who else does that? And uh, Conan pronounces it that way. I noticed that when I listened to his show. He also pronounces it rampage. rampage. Yeah. Anyway, like he changes the accent on the word for some reason. Yeah. Well, anyway, there you that go, would be so like I'm if we saying. called you Nathan. You know, Nathan. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we have a very special guest. Do we? Not oh, yeah. young Tony Schiavone, like no. you. Shut uh, up. Real quick, one more thing I wanted to touch. Or oh, God, two more things. I'll run over them quickly. For quickly, time's sake. we're running out of time. It is that kind of podcast, my friend. Jade, Jade, Jade Cargill retained her title. She's 53-0 and 0 now. 
and it's yeah. about time they put her in the world title picture, honestly, yes. at 53 and 0. And I, I wrote about that a little bit when I did the coverage this week with AEW. But the thing about it is either that or they're saving her to be the one who makes the decide who is the decider in this AEW versus WWE invaders war that they're trying to play out. It's it's like a mini NWO invasion in the AEW women's division. So I got a feeling Jade's gonna be kind of the wild card in that whole angle if it plays out. I can see so. that. And the last thing I wanted to touch on is Josh Alexander said he's hopeful to compete in this year's NJPW G1 Climax Tournament. So yep. I can also see that being really good for him. Um, he was oh. there last night. Yeah, I think it will do really well for the Impact as a whole as well. I think it will be – it will, will definitely help them out too. If there was anybody in the world you would ask to be like, hey, I want this guy to be the, the ambassador of my company or my promotion – could you actually say there's anybody better than Josh Alexander? No. I mean, oh, just no. all around gentleman, professional, he, he, great yeah. wrestler, everything, the whole package. hundred percent. If 100%. you guys haven't listened to that episode, go check it out. Yes, please. Great do. Nate, you did a terrific job on that, by the way. Oh, I got praise. Thank he you, does bro. a few things good. <laughs> well, you were flexing your muscles about being the boss earlier, so I thought I better kiss up before we went off. Oh, the air. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, well, look, uh, we've got a fantastic interview. Um, with a guy that has a hell of a history. Uh, a guy you could say you really look up to, right? You have to physically look up. You phys- yeah, okay. Took me a minute. He is quite literally a jack of all trades. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, there we go. Got one in yeah. there. But, uh, yeah, um, I am very excited to do this interview. Uh, the only thing is, though, I've definitely lost this week's word of the week. You can't I'm guess what it was, huh? I, uh, I, I think I have an idea, but I am. Um, I The only thing I can think of, and I didn't want it to be disrespectful during it, and I'm going to put it out there. This was my stab in the dark instead of shouting it out when it was because it was during a a part of the news in which I didn't really want it. It didn't feel appropriate to do, but mm. you, I don't know what the word was because I can't, I can't pronounce it, but you said it during the uh, part around Jerry Jarrett. No. Incorrect. Damn no. it! Damn no, it! Right. Okay. All right. Well, anyway. And it doesn't surprise me that you couldn't pronounce the word that you thought it was anyway. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Right. That's what we call a smoke screen right well, there. Well, Are we supposed to reveal it now? Should we reveal it? No, the- no okay. we won't reveal it now. Hit no, the no. road, Jack. Yeah. So this that Jack's is, coming in. That is uh, one and O oh to Joel. So uh, it's not a good start for this new segment for me. But, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I want to hand over to us from the past because it's obvious I cut my hair. Um, oh, don't worry. And enjoy, really, the end of the day, because it was a, it was a funny interview. So yeah. anyway, folks, see ya. Ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, and small people all over the world, I introduce to you a man standing at seven freaking feet tall. And that's no joke, seven feet. It's a lot of feet. It's a lot of feet. He is your current BRCW heavyweight champion, a friend to everyone's favorite, Frank the Clown, a guy who can legitimately say, rest in peace. As he is Young Undertaker, I give to you the upstanding, give a round of applause, today's guest, Jack Tyus! Appreciate y'all, man. Appreciate y'all. How are we doing, my friend? All well with yourself? Doing well, man. Doing well. Just living that life, traveling a lot. You know how it is. Uh, Yeah, I get you, my friend. I get you. The travel life itself. Joel, you all well today, my friend? Doing pretty good. Um, Can't complain. Uh, I'm not on the travel life, but (laughs) that workflow life. Oh, man, hey, you know what? That's hard. That'd be harder for me, man. That nine to five is tough sometimes. Yeah, man. <laughs> feel you. I feel you. Well, look, 
We are very pleased to have you today. Thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. You've had me, a rather interesting career, is the way I can word this, because you have you've gone from one sport to another sport to acting as well to do you name it this you you are a man of all trades i'm gonna say that now and a jack of all trades yeah yeah a jack oh, of all trades i see there what you, you did go. there, there you i go. like that i like that so we're gonna start with a segment i like to always kind of get people off and always always questioning so the first one we're going to talk about your first match on the indies so, okay. okay all right so i'll say a little bit of a couple of names and let's see how much you remember and uh, let's have a little chat about it so the first match i found was yourself versus somebody called bull anderson at ccw untouchable on the 14th of the 11th 2021 is that your first match that I could obviously find on the Indies? That was not actually my very first match. Oh, here we go. That was not actually my very first match. My very first match on the Indies was against uh, Brady J um, with Mr. Bad Attitude. Okay, okay. Uh, talk us through this match. A bit of insight there. Well, uh, yeah, I man, so that was out in uh, Los Angeles. And it was with uh, it was with a can of pro wrestling. Okay, was okay. the name of the promotion. Mm-hmm. And um, I was working with uh, Party Boys, another wrestler out there. I don't know if you guys know who that is. And uh, he works with UWN. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was just it was just what you expected to be, man. I mean, I came out, kicked him in the face, threw him in the corner. <laughs> you know? Absolutely what, else killed he, him. what else is he supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, going up against you, buddy, I'm not going to lie. I, I I would have cowered in the corner, personally. I'd have just gone, okay, you win. I give up. I, I quit. I, that. Hey, I, me. I give it to him, man. He got himself beat up worse by slapping me in the face. Oh. So, Why? You know, Why poke the bear? Why poke you can't, the bear? You can't, fix, you can't fix stupid, brother. <laughs> no, you can't. Oh, it's a fact, you know? Oh, Brave and stupid, man. They're that close. They they're are. They close. are. I will give you that. I think they they're best close. friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're, they're, yeah. Like, Some might say brothers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, fair play. So I'm assuming, of course, you won the match. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the, all, absolutely. There wasn't any outside interference or any of that. But no, yeah. I don't need. I don't need anything like that. There you go. Yeah. That's a man yeah. that can fight his own battles. That's what I like to hear. Sure. Well. You know, there we go. See, as always, I get schooled, which is always the case. But you know what? I love to hear about everyone's very first match that they remember because it hopefully gives you a little bit of jog down memory lane, which is where I'm kind of going to go next. So you started out initially playing basketball at Morgan State University. Yeah. uh, So that's actually where I graduated. That was the last school I played for. Okay. Uh, I ended up playing for five different colleges in my college career. Okay. Um, I, okay. Yeah. I uh, know. I got around. Um, I started at Henderson State in Arkansas, went on to Howard College and Eastern Oklahoma College for my sophomore year, did my junior and senior year at Cal State Bakersfield. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then, I, or my bad, I was at Howard College. It was a junior college before that. And then I went on to Cal State Bakersfield. And then I finished my career at Morgan State. Okay, okay. So, so at Morgan State, you know, did you ever think at some point, I could do wrestling, I could be into this? It, it was, was basketball kind of your, hey, I'm a natural talent at this, and how, how, did, it, how did it all come about? How did it flourish from there? Well, you mean, I mean, like, I was a big wrestling fan when I was younger. And, uh, you know, it's something, when you're seven feet tall, when you're this, when you're this heavy, when you're this heavy set, especially at seven feet tall, I mean, everyone tells you, like, you should be in wrestling or you should be in basketball. It's the running joke, right? <laughs> it's one or the other. <laughs> it's one or the other. And uh, so had I considered it, for sure, absolutely. Uh, hmm. Especially, like, when I was younger, I was like, I want to be a wrestler. Um, Who doesn't? But as I got older, you know, it was definitely more <laughs> basketball. 
Um, like it was something in my mind, but at the time I was still like, you know, you got a hoop dream, man. I'm, I'm gonna go play in the NBA. I'm gonna play overseas. Like, you know, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. And uh, you know, and then it, things evolve and things change as you get older. Yep. Yep. Understandable. Understandable. I mean, obviously did a little bit more digging on yourself as I do. You played for the Washington Generals. Is that right? I did. Uh, I had a couple of professional uh, jobs in my life, uh, basketball-wise. Okay. Who, who did you play for? So I played in Canada with uh, the Wel- uh, with Wellington out near Guelph. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. yes. Yeah, for the, CB, for the CBL, all Butch, yep. or CBA, I'm sorry, uh, Butch Carter. He's the guy who runs that league, mm-hmm. the old coach for the NBA and all them guys. Uh, played there. I did some pro tour teams over in China, over in the Dominican Republic. And I was getting ready to go to either Australia or Mexico was oh, kind of the cool. decision to be made at that time in my professional career. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was kind of a breakout year for me on some level uh, because I was finally going to like, you know, it was a guaranteed contract overseas. And, and when I was at my, I was at an event for my agent, uh, my basketball agent at the time and uh, the head recruiter for the Washington generals and the Harlem Globetrotters came to me and oh, wow. said, Hey, we'd like to bring you up in New Jersey for a tryout. Um, yeah. Had the tryout. They loved me. And I just kind of make the decision if I was ready to, like, step away from competitive basketball and kind of switch into this, you know, because you lose every night. Uh, you know? Oh, yeah. yes. Exhibition, yeah. isn't it? That's the way they're worded nowadays. The exhibition of the hard on globe trotters. Yeah, like, they have a hard time calling it a real game now. But I think if you did, if you did the numbers, <laughs> we're like, oh, with 20,000 at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, not a very good record. I think I think they have three wins in their whole history. Oh my wow. God. Wow. I know. But they're I fun know. to watch. Oh, hey, great time. Great time. Oh. It's, it's honestly, it's what really, like, doing that job, because I was the head villain, all right? Yeah. I, I got to be the guy who came out and crushed the ball and, you know, had the mic on the whole time with the with the head guard, Harlem Globetrotter, and we'd, you know, banter back and forth. And and I really got into the in, enjoying the entertainment side of things, mm-hmm. um, you know, because I could still do what I'd always done be an athlete yeah. you know and then i can and, uh, you know for, continue to play basketball and do that and make a living that way but now i had this whole new element to it that i really enjoyed and that's actually how it directly led into me getting the job in wwe was through the art of love trotters really yeah okay okay nice. um i have a friend named alex bright he was uh i met him on the globe trotters he used to work for wwe before he worked with us okay, okay. And he knew AJ Styles and, uh, you know, AJ lived out in Georgia. We were doing shows out there. AJ, he invited AJ out to one of the games. AJ came, went up to him after the game. He watched the whole show, went up to him after the game and kind of said like, hey, man, thanks for the tickets, all that. Um, What's up with your big guy? Uh, You know, (laughs) I saw him him on the mic. I saw him on the court. He looks great. Like, what's up with him? And it just so happened to be in that point in my life, I was finally starting to take the wrestling thing kind of serious where I was like, okay, let me find a school. Let me find out what, what the process is to actually becoming a professional wrestler. You got in that mindset. You started to get that. Yeah. I I was building, I was actually like, I had gone and started building my resume to send the WWE to send Mm -hmm. to this school. Like it was, I was in the process of, wow. And, um, yeah, the universe is funny, man. The universe is funny. And so he says, like, well, can I meet him? I'd love to, I'd love to talk to him because he tells him I'm interested in being a wrestler. Mm-hmm. He says, absolutely. And I'll never, I'll never forget it, man. It will be one of those memories that's just seared in your mind. I'm in the shower after the game. I got soap <laughs> in my hair and my eyes. I'm, you know, like, freaking, here comes my, here comes our, uh, our other, our, our, like, other stage manager, like our, our um, assistant. And he comes running into the bathroom. He's like, Zach. Zach, you gotta get out of here. AJ Styles is out here. He wants to meet you, man. <laughs> I'm like, perfect I'm, time. I'm, I'm, I'm like this. I'm like, listen, you need to get out of my bathroom, man. I am naked. <laughs> I'm in the shower. Get out of here. He's like, no, man. I'm serious. This is happening. I'm like, all right. If I go out here and he's not out here, I'm going to smack you, man. Like, one hell of one hell of a rib. One hell, one of, hell of a rib. rib. I'm, I'm coming out there with soap still in my hair, man. <laughs> and I, I got the picture. I got the picture. I'm telling you, I still got the picture on my phone. And you can tell that I'm fresh out the shower. And I'm there. It's me standing there with AJ. And, uh, but yeah, you, you know, we had a talk, man. And he was kind of like, hey. So I, you know, it, Alex tells me, 
you uh you're getting into wrestling and this is something you're interested in doing and i just watched you do the show man and you know i'd love to just get you a tryout and uh you know see see if they take you over at wwe if you're if you're interested and i mean of course right like i mean why would you, you, you <laughs> right? like, i was looking for schools no, like, i'm good yeah, like what i'd like I'm to good, learn WWE. the best in the world <laughs> absolutely yeah, of course <laughs> of course oh. and uh so they called me april of 2019 i had yeah. my first tryout and that was a private tryout there were no other it was just me and like one of the fresh classes like somebody the group of people they just brought in and hired and they just threw me in the class and we just went for a week i was there for a week and we just went they kind of approached me afterwards and were like hey we really like you um but we want to do a bigger tryout with you and bring you in for like a media day tryout now i me in my mind i'm thinking one of those big 70 person tryouts you know but no no it was kind of somewhere like in the middle more or less where like they had it was me and like six all-american wrestlers oh so, wow yeah i know i i here i, here I am the one basketball <laughs> player man straight in the big leagues boys Let's straight, in the, straight, straight <laughs> in the big leagues man like, straight to the lines and uh you know we go out there we do like four days um and and I'll never, I'll never forget it, man. Because like, you know, we're going through the promo, and that's the, that's the thing. Like, not like with my size, I always tell, I always say, like, obviously, I stand up for my size. But when we did the promo part, that was where most of these guys that were fresh out of college, that you know, were you know, real amateur wrestlers, yeah. that's where they kind of fell apart. And it was, you, you know, I've you... heard that so many times from so many different people that they've got all of this natural talent that they've come straight out of college, and they get in front of a mic and go. Uh, uh, Fear in the headlights. Yeah. Fear in yeah. the headlights. Yeah. Wow. Exactly. It's just, it's amazing. It amazes me. Absolutely amazes me that they keep that. That happens every time as well. Yeah. I mean, hey, it's it, public speaking is the number one fear in the world, right? Yeah. 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 It, agree it's, on that uh, it's a nervous thing, you know. You just, you, the lights are on you, the the mics in your hand, and you just, you're like, what am I doing in your head? It just mm-hmm. gets to you. Yeah, absolutely. And and I was fortunate because I had had that time with the Harlem Globetrotters uh, where, you know, like we did shows for 10,000 people. I mean, you know, when we go overseas, yeah. we did we do giant numbers overseas. Oh, you I know. know. I've, I've been. I've been. Yeah. Hey, there you <laughs> go. So you see when you came to we London, I've been. Are gigantic. Oh, it's, and the atmosphere is incredible as well. So oh, yeah. If you can so perform much in that. Woo! Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Oh, hey, and I've gone out there, and you know, I have fun, and I, I, I learned to enjoy that. I did it every night of my life for you know nearly nearly two and a half years, mm-hmm. and like so, me getting this mic in front of like twenty people, I don't know y'all. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Hand this here. Hand this here. I got this. <laughs> yeah. Give me that kid. Oh. So, you know, I uh, I really think that along with my size, obviously, is where I feel like I stood out in the in the crowd in that regard. Amazing. It's like. Like a meme of expectation versus reality. The expectation is Enzo Amore on the mic, and the reality is Scott Steiner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's. <laughs> oh, we got him. We've got him. Yes, we've done that. We've done another tick list there. Done it. Oh, amazing. Amazing. Damn, I'm amazing. not hard, though. I'm not hard to get, man. <laughs> so, so, you joined the PC in January 2020. Is that right? Yes. Is that when you, yes. I saw the announcement and everything. How was that for you with that? Because is it, I guess, I'll be honest, I've not spoken with many people around when they've been into the WWE Performance Center. What is it? Is it very rigid? Is it quite loose flowing? Do you have set almost like college in a way? How does it kind of work? Um, you know, man, so I was there at a very, very interesting time, obviously. January 2020, March 2020. Yeah. Um, whole world shut down, right? So the, uh, I can only speak to my experience um, uh, really after that. Like before, it was it was much, I feel like it was much more rigid. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they took a lot more time to build stars, whereas you kind of mm-hmm. saw like Vince, Vince now, like, you know, like when he got there and he got back down there, he kind of threw him up there. He was just get him up, get him going. We're trying to, we're trying to get him out there. Uh, I think, I think Paul, um, you know, Trips has a much different approach, where he takes the time to build stars and get there, and like, 
you know, um, that said, I think there was a lot more rigidness to it when I first arrived. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then when COVID happened, everyone had to be fluid. Right. Like everyone had to be, we were, we were making pop-up PCs and warehouses, you know, we were, we were moving rings and like in and out of freaking, we were, we were literally working out in the, um, the shooting, the extra shooting ring they had. So like you oh, just, wow. at that time, it really had to be like, you know, you're playing it by ear and you're doing the best you could. Mm. A lot of, uh, a lot of over, uh, over like a lot of Skype skull sessions. Yeah. The, the one thing I will say, man, is like, you know, it was, it was, it was just a really screwy time when I got there because like when I arrived, um, my coach's mother at the time had passed. And he was gone for like the first two weeks I was there. Mm-hmm. And then my mother passed immediately after that. Oh, and so mm-hmm. I was gone. I was gone for like a week or two after that. And so like there was just that little time. And like, so, so it was a very interesting time for me because my first real experience with it other than like four weeks was me being on a, on a Skype call with my coach every day, four days a week. Mm. Okay. okay. You know, and then after like six months, we finally started getting back in the ring. Okay. So, so. Who was your coach? Does it? Did you? Rob have... Brookside. Yeah. Yeah, baby, the yes. Wildcat. Yeah. Oh, my man. That's a good my one. man. That is oh, yeah. the that's, British star. That, the French. That's right. Hey, if I have a mentor, man, like I always say, I there's probably I, I realistically have like well now I probably have a few more, but at the time, if I had two real mentors, it was AJ Styles and Robbie Brookside. Oh, mate, I to hear I mean... that Robbie as well. As a British oh, yeah. guy who has seen Robbie over here in the UK, to obviously see him go, and to hear that you are, oh, you you are in safe hands, my friend. Oh, you put a smile <laughs> on my face to hear. Oh, oh yeah. He talks, Nathan talks what a lot about Robbie. <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. but, um, um, Nathan I, talks a lot about Robbie. He loves him. Oh, he's uh, he's one of the best. When I when I, when I think about like the psychology of wrestling, especially yeah. as when I came in green, didn't know anything. I could not have asked for a better teacher. I mean, as a mentor, as a friend, Robbie has been just, he's, he's one of the best, man. One of the best human beings I know. Yeah, 100%. I'd like to meet 100%. him one day. He's, he's, yeah. he's, he's and like you said, such a nice guy. And his philosophy on right. wrestling, you can tell that if you, have, if you have William Regal with his philosophy, in my mind, and this is, this is coming from a Brit, I don't know if I don't want to upset anyone here or anything, but Regal is here. Robbie is ever so slightly above. That man will tell you stuff, psychology, and the way he wrestled. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that you had Robbie as your coach, man. So happy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was I was very blessed in that regard. I also was, uh, you know, he wasn't my direct coach, but I got to work with Norman Norman Smiley a lot. Okay. So okay. As far as the Brits, as far as some Brits go, like in Moss, Coach Moss, I remember Moss. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, okay. And there were so there you... were there were a lot of good British coaches in there, but uh, there was also because we bounced around in classes. Like that's how it works over there, right? Okay. You're in a class for a time period, and then you move on to another class. So I was able to have a lot of really good teachers in a short amount of time. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Like I said, start out with Robbie. That's like my guy. Forever, like what I said, my first wrestling coach, my my favorite wrestling coach is probably gonna be Robbie. But then I got to go to people like Scotty um, okay. I got to go with Terry Taylor. Um, oh, wow! I, I got to work with Jamie Noble. Oh. Uh, like I said, I got I got to learn from Matt Bloom and all those guys. I even like when they did the last ride, and Undertaker was coming in and doing the and doing the shooting for that. Like we got mm. to work with him. Mar- and you know, Mark Henry would come in. So I was very I was very fortunate to get to work with a lot of great great you know, Hall of Famers and legendary wrestlers. And then when I got released, I was, uh, I immediately started working with Devon Dudley over at uh, okay. Triple D's on okay. Orlando. Okay. So, you know. And, I heard and his now, uh, sons are going now. His, who, his sons? sons? Yeah. Are they? I, th- I think, I heard they're wrestling now. Maybe. I didn't ever, I never saw them at the school. I still go up there from time to time. Oh, okay. the, I wonder where they're training. His kids are pretty young. They're probably. Oh. I mean, they're probably. They're probably in the ring. If we're going to be honest, they're probably oh, yeah, in, the ring. in the ring. We're one hundred percent in the ring. Not like broadcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah they're training. not. They're not going to. They're not going to be on. Uh, you know, uh, anywhere would, in WWE. Would say they're training yet is what I'm saying. They're in the ring, though, for sure. Yeah. Like, oh, I mean, why? You know, if you are 
a rest, you know, if you are the the child of a wrestler of, of Devon, as why wouldn't you be? You probably were born inside of a ring. Do you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> right. So well, this is where I want to conceive inside of a ring. Birth my child. <laughs> Right there in the ring. One, two, three, done. Actually, no, probably no. Anyway, let's move on. So ball's finished, ball's finished, brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Well, you know, uh, you you did feature on NXT um, on the 4th of May episode. Uh, not, obviously not, not a big one, but as a bouncer, if I remember, what was kind of that experience? Because it's, it's 2021 at this point, so... Is the well? It depends on people's definition of pandemic is over. However, um, you know, at that time with NXT and stuff, how was that for you? Kind of being told, "Hey, we need you on TV today." How did that all come about? Um, so they were obviously doing the thing with uh, Cameron Grimes and the Million Dollar Man, mm-hmm. and um, man, I forget which producer it was. But, you know, they, they called me personally and they were like, you know, we need a big bouncer for this. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I've, I've done some acting before I got into wrestling and like, you know, like I've done theater and stuff and all that good nonsense. So mm-hmm. so it wasn't a very big reach. Uh, honestly, man, the, the acting part's always been a little bit wrestling, easier than the wrestling part. OK, because, um, you know, it's like the acting thing. I actually have a decent amount of experience at throughout my life. Oh, uh, I, just I, I've, I've got a little bit on that one, my friend, when we get to it. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. And, uh, Nathan so, and his so, Yeah, that was that was interesting. I would say a lot more nerve wracking of a thing, though, was like, and you know, not many people know this. In the 2021 and the 2020 uh, WrestleMania, hmm. um, I was actually in that WrestleMania. And I was one of the people that Gronk landed on. Oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah, man. When Mojo lost the belt and stuff, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so that was that was definitely more nerve wracking than the than the bouncer part. Sure. <laughs> There's a little insight for you guys. Now I got to go watch it back. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. <laughs> I will watch this one, but straight back. I will tell you that now. Well, I mean, the. Your your wrestling career, you know, as you said, you know, it's it's dominantly going since you, since your release in August 2021. Um, you've worked with like CCW, uh, Canna Pro, Empire, USA. You even had a match on Impact, if that is correct, in yeah. which you, which you won. How mm. how did that opportunity come out? How you know how how was that for you? Um, so it was, that was actually my first televised, um, indie promotion show. Okay. Um, right. So I actually got that connection again, um, through AJ Styles. Uh, yep. you know, I called him and he got me in touch with, uh, Scott Demore. you know, cause, uh, what, you know, the, the thing about it, like for me, uh, that I think I won't say, I think it was the same for every athlete who became a wrestler with WWE and then mm-hmm. got released. I think, I think this is a common thing we, they, that we have in common throughout those people is I didn't have really anything in the world of wrestling network outside of the WWE. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have any matches on WWE. You know, unfortunately in my time, I did some spots, but I didn't have any matches. Yeah. Um, so I really came out with next to nothing in the world of uh, mm-hmm. wrestling, like mm-hmm. knowledge, network, and all those things. So I was, I was again, very fortunate to have a few people in my corner that were like, hey, let me reach out to some people. Let me get you in touch with some people. Um, you know, people like AJ Styles, people like Matthew Mashler over in Boca, and Neil Glazer, who run PRCW and all them guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, got me in touch with CCW, with Nellio over there. All those guys. I was, I was blessed to have some good friends who helped me through that. But it was definitely a struggle for the first year, kind of piecing it all together and finding out how it worked and, you know, finding out that not everybody in the business is out for your good. Like, you know, some people, some people see you and they see, and they see somebody who's green and they see somebody who doesn't know what they're doing that they can take advantage of, you know, and that's what they see. So, um, in that regard, it's sad, uh, but it's true. It's the truth. I mean, that's just something you have to get used to. And I, I don't, you know, no, no anger towards them. Like, you know, I, I didn't know. I learned. I learned more through failure and stuff like that about this business than 
any amount of sitting down and talking to somebody could have told could have taught me. Mm. First hand experience and go from there. But it's yeah, definitely Joel's right. It speaks volumes about yourself that you have kept going. It's not taken you down. You are still where you are now and um, yeah. you know, and you have you I mean, you are currently the BRCW heavyweight champion. Oh, you yeah. have yeah. you have that I have to admit it is a very very nice championship to look it looks at. Awesome. It is it looks the it's it's one it's of the not, coolest titles it's, I've yeah, seen. Yeah, it's not it's I'm not gonna, gonna, I'm gonna send this to the promoter, man. He's gonna love there this. There you go. Send it, send it. It's, I'm it's, sending it. He's gonna love hearing this. You know, and, I like halfway know Matt. Like not <laughs> I've met him a, a few times. Uh we've gone on the Jericho cruise and I've seen him there. Um yeah. but he's a pretty cool dude. I I actually been messaging him to see if he wants to come on as well. To pick oh, yeah. his brain, so. yeah, man, he's yeah, he'd, he'd be he'd be he'd absolutely be good to go on, and you know, he he runs a podcast too. Uh, what is, I forget what it's called, Matthew Mania, I think. Matthew Mania, that's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure he'd love to have you guys on there sometime nice. if you guys ever want to join because he loves he loves wrestling personalities and wrestling people, and that's what he wants on there a lot of the time. So nice, but okay. all right, yeah. But I that mean, said, man, uh, yeah, that and you know, and I'll tell you guys because you guys will probably be the first ones to hear about it, right? Uh, go on. Here we go. Oh, here you go. Um, here so we I did go. A match with NWA the other day. Oh, go on. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna. That's all I'm gonna say about it's it. All you it's all yours. Okay. Airs, man. Okay. I'll have to wait till it all comes in. Okay. But uh, well. you know, things have things have slowly been moving along. So with that, and you know, very nice, very yeah. nice. Well, I mean, obviously, wrestling is is what you are. You know, you're you're known for. You are. You know, you you have. A B a BRCW heavyweight championship. Uh, thanks to thanks to a lovely gentleman, and I will say he's a lovely gentleman in, in Frank the Clown. Oh, uh, what a guy! What a guy! <laughs> Absolutely nothing wrong with the man. Absolutely, mm-hmm. he is salt of the earth. Salt. Of salt the of the earth. earth. I like there that. You go. No, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's that's all we're gonna say about Frank, because he is he is such a nice guy. Yeah. Um, not many people agree, but you know what? They're idiots. They're stupid. You can't please everybody. You can't, you can't please you can't everybody, be, Nathan. As you said, as you said, you can't teach stupid. No, you. That's no. right. You can't. You can't. You, you can't, can't fix it, brother. You can't no, fix no. it. So, you are. You do, however, have some other interesting hyphens against your name. One of them being that you featured in the background of Jay and Silent Bob's reboot in 2019. Man. Okay, see, there's one I didn't think you were going to do. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that one's not on my IMDb. No, yeah, okay. no, there you go, there you go. So, yeah. uh, you know, how, how was it? Because I'm a huge Jay and Silent Bob fan. Huge. Oh, man. Oh, Who is yeah. it? We, we, Who is look it? at me, Nathan, we just got that much closer. What there a guy. You go. What, what a guy. guy. My yeah, first rated R movie that I went to in movie theaters when I was able to buy a ticket was Clerks 2. So, oh, I mean. Oh. So, yes. how, how, how was that for you? I'm, I, you uh, know, I'm assuming as a fan as well, you marked out a little bit. Uh, dream but... come true, I absolutely did. It's one of the like, I've, and I've met a, I've met a few celebrities, man, in my life. Like, uh, and I, I normally, I normally don't mark out over many people, but I definitely marked out over Kevin Smith. Oh, who? What? Yeah, I mean, he's I... a mastermind. Jeez. Oh, he's so man. No, he's so good. I even tell you, I'm like, I uh, so man. I got hooked up at the time. It was my girlfriend at the time. Um, her buddy was a producer and he was like, Hey man, you guys should come out and visit me on the set where, you know, I'm a producer on this. Nice. Um, I went out there and, uh, I was standing on the set and I got to meet Kevin and I walk up to Kevin and we get to talking and I'm like, Hey man, like, I just want you to know, I'm like your biggest fan. Like, I'm really, I've been watching you since I was a kid. You were one of the first, we were one of the first awful movies I've ever watched, man. Like, Ball Rats and, <laughs> yes. and like you said, Clerks and, uh, Jay and Son of the yep. Bob Strike Back and stuff, man. Um, Dogma was one of my absolute favorites. Oh, like, what great. a film! What a what a oh, good one, right? That's what I, so, oh. so I'm sitting there, and I'm like I said, I'm having my Mark moment. Where I'm like, dude, these are <laughs> like you're you're like one of my favorite actors, absolutely my favorite director. And he's like, come here, give me a hug. And he's kind of short. He's like five eight, bro. So like, <laughs> oh. I got a photo on my phone. I'm sitting there hugging Kevin Smith, man. And he looks at me. and He goes like, well, hey man, you know. You look like you belong in a movie. 
Oh, yes. And I'm like, more than anything on earth, oh. I want to be in. The, I want to be in yes. the Jay and Silent Bob reboot. Like, absolutely, hundred percent. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I went to wardrobe um, the next day, man, or something like that. I think I, I think I went to wardrobe that next day. Came back like two weeks later, and I was there for like four days. And you know, we actually we actually shot a scene, so it wasn't like we actually shot a whole scene for the mm-hmm. thing. It wasn't just that initially background, but editing's editing. Yeah. Um, hey. Editing. So, it opens up. You guys, you know, you know that you know the movie. Obviously, like when they when they're in the what is it, a uh, Canacon or Chronicon? Yes. Oh, the Chronicon. Chron- yeah. Chron- 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 yeah, Chronicon. Yeah. Chronicon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and they meet the Cush boys. You know, the kids they were yeah. selling pot to when they were younger. Yeah. And right before that, they that opening of that scene is actually it's supposed to be me standing there in my like I'm supposed to be like it was. Uh, what was real big at the time? Uh, Game of Thrones was real big at the time, so it was okay. Bob Snow. That was what they decided to call the call the thing I was wearing. Was Bob Snow, giant Bob, Bob Snow. Snow. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And, uh, Bob Snow. They 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 literally flank out from each side of me. Like Jay comes up and like says some smart ass shit, and, and silent and uh, silent Bob looks me up and down, and me and him kind of just nod to each other. And, they go, <laughs> and that ended up getting cut out and edited. Oh, oh man. man. I uh, broke my heart. It broke my heart. They, they should have sent you like a clip of that so you could have it forever. I'm telling you, man. I kind of, t- I'll tell you this. I did kind of cheat though because I was like, I got to get Kevin Smith a gift. But what do you get Kevin Smith? And oh, yeah. I know. I know. I, but you know what? Hey, I, you're going to love this. You're going to appreciate this. So I'm like, well, we have the same last name. Okay. Uh, well, all right. Cool. So I'm just going to give him a customized jersey from the Washington Generals. There you go. Oh, that's it. Yes. That's right. So I was like, I'm going to give Kevin Smith a, you know, a Smith journey from the Washington Generals, and he's going to think I made this for him. Man. <laughs> See, always thinking. Everything works out for smart, smart, man. smart, man. Well, that, that's not the, the only thing in which, uh, you know, you've been in a, in a couple of other things. Um, but one thing that, we're what you know. I'm watching. I've been watching them all because who who doesn't enjoy a little bit of uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson? Let's be honest. Come on, thanks. You are young. This is this is this blows my mind here. Young Undertaker. Yeah, so man. You've got Young Rock. You've got Young Undertaker, and mm. that. And I'll be honest with you. Your portrayal is brilliant it's uh, it's exactly how like i would expect and i'm gonna because i've got such great respect for for the gentleman it, he will always be known to me as undertaker never i will never ever call him by his real name so just how i expect that that bar scene with young stone coal and yeah. just ah, oh, just it just to me, how how has that been for you? How's that experience been? Um, so so a, a couple a couple of things I guess. One is that like so for me, my favorite wrestler of all time, one hundred and ten percent bar none, is the Undertaker. Okay. Uh, so dream roll then, dream roll, dream roll, dream roll. Child hit me like when I got that role, bro. I I I must have done that audition to fit tape thirty times, forty times minimum. Mm-hmm. I mean, like I tried it with makeup on. I tried it with a coat, with a trench coat. I, I man, I'm I like I was so determined to get that role. It took me 16 hours to shoot wow. a five minute audition tape. Wow! Hey, and, uh, you got it. It worked. It worked. Yeah. So I, I got the role, man. And I mean, like like I said, dream come true. Um, obviously, you can't like wrestling fans are wrestling fans, and uh, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not Undertaker, right? I'm not. I'm not really Mark, um, and they're never going to be happy unless it's oh, really happy. again, right? So I I'm like there was there was definitely the there was definitely some blowback. Yeah, um, I think I, somebody know. said I looked like uh, like Danny Trejo and the Undertaker. <laughs> Like had a baby or something. I, that, that, uh, that man, I was like, man, I really like. They even made me paler than what I already am for you to be saying that. <laughs> like, machete taker. 
Oh man, I thought, <laughs> man, I'll tell you, there was some stuff like that in the comments, no question. Uh, but oh. but all in all, man, it was a it was an awesome experience. Like I, um, you know, I got to work with Uli. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher his name. Latafu, Latafu. I think it's I I'm gonna be honest. You guys aren't gonna try to butcher it. I'm British. No, I'm British. I think it's Latatif. 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 Something. I look. I'm British. It's gonna. It's gonna. Whatever I say, it's gonna sound terrible. Whatever I say, it's gonna sound terrible. That's that. You know what? That's the approach I took. But I. Yeah. No, man. They were. They were amazing to work with, man. Luke Hawk. Uh, over there, he was uh, the guy who played Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's he's another uh, independent wrestler, wrestles with NWA a lot, but he's amazing. Um, James Burris, who played Triple H, man, I love it. Went after Rob I love like I it. Said, I, hey, not, I love it. I love it. Those guys, they're gonna come after you, brother. Oh, look, look again, you know, I'm gonna teach stupid guys what to do. <laughs> I'm gonna teach stupid guys what to do. I love it, and I it's such to me. The depiction for everyone that is playing, it I still adds that comedy right. value, which Young Rock is. Yeah. And every single one of you has hit that on the mark because, to you know, even even for example, who they have for Young Vince, like, and that's that's weird to say for me, Young Vince. That's young Vince, think. yeah. But absolutely brilliant, um, you know, and I mean, how how was you know, did have you? Have you met Dwayne on this? How was he there at the time, or how's it kind of work? Was he not there? What what kind of happens? No, no. So Dwayne wasn't there. Uh, Dwayne shoots all his scenes in Hollywood, from what I understand, unless he has to come out to the set, and that's because mm -hmm. you know he's a busy guy. So we, yeah. you know, he can't be. They're out. They're out there on location nine months out of the year. Right. Um, you know, with everything else he got going on, I, I was, I, you know, I, I did not expect to see him. Like, yeah. you know, and I've, I've seen him before. We've never met personally. I'm actually, I'm actually friends with his daughter, Simone. We knew each other down in the PC mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but, um, you know, as far as the experience goes in that one, man, it was, uh, what a great group of people to work with. And, you know, they're going to, they're going to get, they're going to get heat from other people, but I think the production with the group of people they got working there, like they did an amazing job and they were such a good time to work with. And, and I'm glad you noticed it is comedy. And I think, oh, I think a lot of people yeah, sight it's of meant it, to be right? funny. I, yeah, I it's meant to be funny. It. I sit yeah. and watch it week in, week out. I sit on a Saturday as it comes on over here in the UK. I sit, put my feet up, and it, it, it is a good half hour of just zoning out from real life. Comedic factor. I mean, and who they have to play real young rock. Mm. Brilliant. Brilliant yeah, kid, really and yeah. you know, I mean, have you heard anything from the man himself about how you depict him? Well, not uh, not personally. Um, okay, know, like said, okay. That's, that's that's that'll be the that'll be the one thing I always want to ask him is like, man, did I do it justice for you? Yeah, you know, like <laughs> if there's one opinion I care about, it'll be the only one on earth outside of my own and like maybe my boss's. Hmm. It's gonna be it's gonna be the guy I portrayed. Um, I can tell you this, as, as far as the selection process goes for the for the roles, you know, The Rock is the executive producer on that show. Yep. He takes a very strong interest in his own show. So I know without question, because they, you know, the producers had come up and told me, like, he, he you know, hand selects the people who plays those wrestlers. Oh, so, okay. So, you know, it's, it's a big part of the process. He sees every one of them. He, he you know, they, they all get his I mean, seal of approval. Yeah. And, you know, to hear that, you know, that The Rock gave me Show the seal of approval on it. Oh. Like that's it's not it's not Taker, but I mean like, you know, it's still like, you know, that's, it's, um, that's a it's the rock. Me that seal of approval. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. 100%. oh. Yeah. Wow. I got one for you. Go on. Let's go back to uh, last year at Lost Lands Music Festival. Oh, good. There's another big guy out <laughs> okay. there. Okay. All right. Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal. about it. He called you out. I want to know what you were thinking at the time, and could you ever see yourself in a ring with that big guy? Absolutely. I called him back out, too. Let there be no doubt. There so you go. That's, that's not the first time he called me out, though. 
So a little bit of backstory. A little bit of backstory on this, man. Like um, EDC Orlando 2021. 2021. Okay. He did. He did a show out there. I didn't know he was a. He didn't know. I didn't know he was a DJ at the time. I go to the show. It's an awesome show. And like one of the things I went for as I started, as people started telling me about him, was he comes out there and moshes at the end of all his shows. That's like one of the things he does. <laughs> Sorry. So, yeah, yeah, I know. Man. Like, Bro, what? I, 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 I didn't know either, man. I had no idea either. So he comes out at the end of all of his shows and he normally moshes with the crowd. And I'm like, sweet. I'm going to go mosh with Shaq. I'm <laughs> like, you know. I'm like, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to do on my Saturday evening. I want to go mosh with Shaq. Why not? Bucket list. Why not? Why not? And uh, so we get there and like, you know, I'm a big guy. So I, I go over to the mosh pit. And, you know, when I was younger, like I used to go to people like Slipknot and, you know, okay. Megadeth. And, yeah. You know, Same you know like, so, come on. Yeah, man. So like, you know, when I, when I, you know, when you go to, when you go to EDM festival, the crowd's different. That's the polite way I'll say it. <laughs> you know, yeah. the, the crowd's different. It's not a it's not a three hundred pound man with a chip on his shoulder and you know half a gallon of tequila down his gullet. No. <laughs> so, uh, so you know, I'm in there and I'm just chucking kids because I am that three hundred pound man with a half a half a gallon of tequila down his gullet. <laughs> and you know? who's going to stop you? Let's that's, be honest. That's, that's, so I'm, we're yeah, just in the boss pit, man, and we're just throwing people around. And Shaq starts like, "I see you, big man." I'm coming for you. I'm gonna come whoop your ass. Oh shit! <laughs> so, so he's like, he's like, come up to the rail, dude. And I come up to the rail. Security clears the space for me right at the rail. And I'll never forget because he came to get in the mosh pit at the end of the show, man. But the crowd, like, we fresh out of COVID, right? The crowd like just surged the thing, and he literally couldn't get into the uh-huh. he couldn't get into the crowd the first time mm. through. And so that passed, man. And then we go to Lost Lands. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm, yeah, all right. Uh, Shaq's playing. I'm gonna go back and mosh with Shaq. I'm gonna go try to mosh with Shaq again. The smile on your face for this, you seem, you're so happy, yeah. and I love it. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah, hey man, I, I have a good time. I do. I promise you. So I go, I go out there, and uh, you know, I same thing happens. I'm sitting out there, we're moshing, we're having a great time, and all of a sudden, Shaq starts calling me out again. He's like, "I see you, big man. You're back, and I'm coming for you." <laughs> and and eventually, eventually, like uh, you know, thirty minutes into his set, man, he's he starts he starts like he starts really like you know get that guy you know get him like and he looks at me and he you know I got it on like you can go you can look at the tape and it's uh, and he literally he really goes first guy to knock big man down on his on uh, down gets a thousand dollars. I'd have sat oh. down if I was you I'd have gone okay <laughs> I'm done I went, pay me. <laughs> no I had people I had people come up to me and like you know like let me take you down we we'll get a thousand dollars I'm like no. No, nope. y'all gotta earn this. Yeah, on the this floor. One. Let's go. That's right, man. And I, there's a video on my Instagram, I think, man, where it's me and I'm like, you know, they actually cleared the circle and I get in the middle of the circle and he's, you know, he's, he does a drop like Shaq does a drop, yep. like three, two, one, and they all rush me from all sides, man. Ooh. And uh, none of them got oh. that money. No Good. one got nope. that money. There that you day. go. That's no one got that money that day. That's what I like. Well. So, so, Shaq. you know, Shaq comes down after the set, man, like, because I, I expected him to get in the mosh pit, but he just came down, like, and he, like, he's, like, you know, again, he's, like, come to the rail, come over here, I want to talk to you. And uh, I'll never forget it, man. Pe- again, people rushing the rail, and I'm literally having to move people out of my way. I finally get close <laughs> enough where I can grab Shaq's hand. It's me and him over, like, all the crowd, and he's pulling me over to the rail <laughs> through the crowd of people. <laughs> and, you know, we just sit there. He's like, "Hey, man, it's good to see you again. I'm glad you're good. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come out here and mosh with you next time I see you." Which, uh, by the way, if he ever sees this, I will see you in Electric Forest, young man. There you go. Ooh, there oh, we go. Man, I'm gonna ruin his day. I'm gonna bring a there sign. You go. I'm gonna, That's I'm right. gonna clip this, and we are gonna tweet Shaq like there is yep. no tomorrow. Tweet it, baby. Me there and you, you Electric Forest 2023. One on one. Meet me in the pit, Shaq. The yeah, pit. boy. There we go. Yeah. Well, look. Uh, I would. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. However, sadly, we are going to have to wrap this up. So, you are the BRCW heavyweight champion, sir. With the, with the salt of the earth that is Frank the Clown. Oh yeah, what a guy! What a, what guy. a guy! What a guy! Gentlemen, what is on the cards for you in twenty twenty three? 
man um more wrestling just getting more more shows across the country man i've been uh fortunate so far i've wrestled more in these last you know this has been my busiest month thus far as an independent i think i've done really near seven or eight shows this month nice okay. um so you know that's been my goal this this year is really to get to you know a minimum two shows a week but also to get on tv more man um you know i want acting to be one of those things that starts to take First and you know a lot of more of my time, but um, mm -hmm. you know the one thing I like about acting is that I get to do it during the week and I can go wrestle on the weekends. So I'm still trying to pursue that, but really my goal this year is wrestle, 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 man. You know, get out in as front of many crowds as possible and win as many championships as I can. I mean, yeah, let's be honest, it. who's gonna stop you? Let's be honest, who can? It's stop gonna be pretty you? tough. Not, a, be a, not a damn soul, baby. There especially, we go. Especially because I got Frank the Clown team. with me. You got Frank. You got Frank, baby. That's yeah. right. And the salt of the earth and the gentleman that he is. A gentleman and a scholar. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. yes, he yes, sir. is. Well, Jack, thank you so much for today. We really hey, man, appreciate been, it. Yeah, man, absolutely. It's been such a pleasure. Joel, Nathan, man, you guys are amazing. I appreciate y'all. Oh, no good, hey, my uh, friend. Any Where, can you you? Yeah. Yeah. Where can we find oh. you? Yeah. Where can we find you, Mark? Yeah, man. So uh, my fan page is Jack Talis Official, but you can find me personally at Z the Tall Nomad. Um, you can also find me at Twitter under Jack uh, Jack underscore Talos, and uh, you know uh, I also have a YouTube. You can find me on there. But uh, I always tell people, man, I do I do more comedy stuff on there. <laughs> hey, that's so. hey, I watched some of it. In some of it, you've you've had uh, what was it? You were eating chalk or something. That, 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 there you go. <laughs> you want some entertaining stuff, folks. Go check out this oh. man's YouTube. Oh, no, man. That's, yeah. uh, never eat chalk, kid. Never <laughs> eat chalk. <laughs> well, Jack, again, thank you so much, my friend. Joel, over to you for our traditional goodbye. All right. Thanks, Jack. Thank you for coming on the show, man. Uh, quit eating chalk. But um, go again. check out his stuff, man. I'm, I'm stoked to see you and Shaq one-on-one -on -one in the pit. Um, yeah. this has been Nathan, Joel, and the Jack of All Trades on the Real Wrestling Podcast. Cheers, guys. See ya. Later, guys.